Hi everyone, fingers crossed this will be a really, really quick video just to give you a tip and trick that I learned the other day. So the problem we've got here today relates to my floor scrubber I use for the business. Now, unfortunately, I've broken the holder that holds all our brush attachments off the bottom of the machine. Now I've got a new holder here which screws on to the bottom of the machine. However, they use really, really small, tiny screws to fix this on to the rotating assembly on the bottom of the machine. Now these screws are Phillips head and due to the nature of the chemicals that we use, they, they bind up and get caught in the bottom plate of the machine. Now anyone that's tried to remove a Phillips head that is stuck in there really, really tight knows that there's a huge risk of rounding off the head and then you've got all sorts of dramas trying to get it back out. Now I've soaked it all in WD-40 over the last couple of days, which should, fingers crossed, help us get these screws out. Now I've also borrowed from my lovely neighbour across the road, uh, one of these impact screwdrivers. So you put the corresponding bit into the end of this, place it onto the screw that you are trying to loosen and tap it with a hammer and it gives it a shock we should break the screw loose. However, given the fine head on these screws, I'm still reluctant to use this. However, have you thought about this? And this is something that Bill, who owns this, across the road suggested that we should try first. And this is what I'm going to give a crack at, see if it works. And it might just help you if you're stuck in a messy situation, you don't have one of these impact drivers, or you really don't want to damage the screw head when you go to pull something apart. Come along and I'll show you how. Okay, this is the underside of our machine. And as you can see, they've used these real fine Phillips head screws to hold the plastic holder onto the bottom of the machine. I tried this the other day and I started rounding a head. So I stopped, I've soaked it over the last couple of days and now I'm trying to find a solution to get these back out. So let's try the first method, which is getting a real fine centre punch, impacting on the centre of these screws to hopefully shock them and work them loose a little bit and then you should be able to gently wind them out with a correctly sized Phillips head screwdriver. So I've got my fine center punch here and my trusty old hammer. What you want to do is you want to locate the center of the screw and give it a light tap. Now you want to be careful that you don't damage the head of the screw in doing this as well. My center punch probably could be a little bit finer to fit in the hole. However, I have done a quick test and it did work on the first screw. So let's test this one and see if it will come out. Now, you'll probably know, but there are different size Phillips heads. You wanna pick the screwdriver, which fits correctly and seats into this screw. So you don't have any slop and you're not gonna pull or tear the head apart as you're trying to loosen this screw. Gently, gently, the screw is coming loose. And there, we've successfully removed the screw without damaging the head. It's very, very well soaked in WD-40, which is a good thing. So I'll remove the rest of these now, give it a bit of a clean up and put the new holder back on. And then I'm ready for the job tomorrow because this needs to be used. Now, as I discussed, the other option is to use this impact driver, which I've borrowed from our neighbor. 
I've been meaning to get one of these. They're very, very good, but probably not suited to these really small, fine screws. So in this case, if the first solution of punching and gently removing with a screwdriver didn't work, I would put this on and then hit it with a hammer, which should shock the screw and release it, fingers crossed, from the housing. Fortunately, we haven't had to do that in this case. So now we'll just remove the screws and put our new holder back on. A few moments later. Right, so we had a 50% success rate there with that methodology. Even using the impact driver, I just could not get those last two screws to budge. So what I ended up doing was chopping the remainder of the plastic off using a Dremel and that's left the screw heads exposed. So that will take us on to the third option, which if you are fortunate enough to have the heads of the screws exposed, is that you can use vice grips to lock onto the head of the screw and to gently release them. Once you start getting them moving and unlocked, you can typically put a screwdriver back on and remove them the rest of the way. So it's really quite easy. You adjust the grips so they put a reasonable amount of pressure, but not too much that it will crush the head of the screw. You lock it on. And then you gently twist around until you get it releasing itself out of the threads. Now I do have to note, this is still quite bound up. which really isn't a good thing. So next, you want to clean up your screws or your bolts. Make sure the thread's all nice and clean. And then you just want to wind them in, wind them out to clean up the thread on what you're screwing or bolting into. Now what we'll do is we'll just wipe a small amount of anti-seize onto each of these threads and gently wind them back in. There you have it. It's put back together. That was a real mission, as a lot of these jobs really are. But it just goes to show that there are many, many options out there that you consider when you get into a bind like this. The last thing you wanna do is destroy the object, machine or part that you're working on. So the most important thing is to take your time, think about it and try to find a solution for that particular problem. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Surely it didn't go on for too long. Most of all, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share around if you enjoy it. We've got lots of more content coming. Stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.